The next one is this is I if you ask me the tough, the really, really tough one of of well, I guess the other one was when the two garbage fires went against each other, it didn't matter. But this is the tough one because it's the last crusade versus Jurassic Park. Oh. These are both excellent movies. Who wants to start? Not it. <laughs> okay. Tell you what, I'll start then because mm. I'm such a reserved guy who's quiet all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, like I said, this is really, really tough. Jurassic Park is one of those movies, one of two movies that I went to see twice. And part of it was because I was just blown away by all the dinosaurs and, and the effects in the movie. I thought it was just really good. And rewatching it again and just seeing, just from this point in my life, just watching the acting that everybody did and just how well it was done. Sam Neill, Laura Dern, the kids, uh, even uh, what's I, uh, Wayne... Um, Newman from Seinfeld. He was great as just a scummy little guy that that just went to, to rock, you know? Um, the movie was so good. It was so, uh, Jeff Goldblum was just very Jeff Goldblum. He's always the same guy. He's the movie star too. You know, it's like, it'd be interesting to see Jeff Goldblum not be Jeff Goldblum in the movie. Because he's the same guy in Jurassic Park, in 187, in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. It's always Jeff Goldblum. You know, it, he's always the same kooky guy. It, it's just, that's just his thing. That being said, I would have to give the edge on this one to The Last Crusade. Simply because, I mean, if, if Raiders was the one that introduced it and made this whole like genre bending thing, and like we said in the last ep episode, Sean Connery's performance to me in this is what will keep it clutch going the whole way. Because, you know, you're used to him being James Bond. You're used to him being always this tough guy, you, just a movie star. And to play this just doddering old professor, and the chemistry that the two of them had was just so genuine. Mm -hmm. Like that reaction that he gets when he busts through the window in the castle, and he gets cracked in the knot with the vase, and Sean Connery hits him. He says, Junior! And he just kind of stands up and says, Yes, sir. You know, like kind of like because he's like dazed and he'd be. It is you. It is you, Junior. Well, it breaks the heart and the head. You know that whole thing. Well, I didn't trust you. Why did you? They both banged the same girl. I mean, it's just like all like that whole. And I mean, one of my favorite scenes is actually on the Zeppelin, when Sean Connery's reading the paper, and Harrison Ford is going on. It's like it was a hard way to grow up for you too. And he's just like, do I sense a rebuke? And, and then he's just like, okay, let's talk. And he just stares at him. And he, like, he doesn't know what to do. It's just like, oh, well, let's get on with it then. There's nothing, you had a great childhood. That All of that, Cambridge, especially considering that Harrison Ford initially lobbied hard not to have Sean Connery in the role. Because oh, really, he, he was very, very adamant against him because there was only some 10 years between them. Right. And he was like, it's, it's, it's not going to work. He's only 10 years older than me. It's going to be crap, blah, blah, blah. And that whole chemistry, that, the scene where he, they, they're on a motorcycle and he says, Jesus Christ, and Sean Connery slaps him. And he says, that's for blasphemy. That whole interaction, it was like, it was such father-son stuff that it was just, to me, was just so great that that's why I would just go for Last Crusade over Jurassic Park. Wow. Yeah. I, I, this is a tough one. So I'm with you on everything you said, uh, all the points you make about Jurassic Park, all the points you make about Last Crusade. I think Last Crusade, like we said on the, uh, on, in the last round, arguably the most enjoyable uh, Indiana Jones film. I think in a lot of ways, it was sort of a, a victory lap for yeah. you know Spielberg and Harrison Ford and all of them and it, it's everything you could want in a in an Indiana Jones film. I cut class to see that movie. Yeah, why I. What? I cut class to see that movie. I was a senior <laughs> in high school when it came out. I cut class to see that movie. Wow. It's got to be yeah. maybe the best third. Oh, yeah. 
I can't think of anything else. Maybe Police Academy 3. That, no, that's, yeah. That's... Um, all of that said, I think you still have you still have two other really good Indiana Jones movies. Whereas Jurassic Park, granted there are sequels and there's the whole Jurassic World reboot and everything else, but none of that captures the essence of that movie like that original does. You know, none of the other ones come even come close. Um, and I, and like I said, in the last round, the last time we talked about it, I think Jurassic Park in a lot of ways is like quintessential Spielberg in that it ticks every box. Um, you know, it's got the kind of horror, scary element, um, amazing visual effects. It's got great, great performances, great child performances. Yeah. Um, it's got that sort of magical element where it takes you to a whole nother world, et cetera, et cetera. In that, the way we just talked about E.T. and Sean, when you kind of talked about how iconic it is and the sort of what you think of when you think of like a, an Amblin movie, I feel like that Jurassic Park fits in that, and that sort of magic, take you to a whole new world type of, not like Aladdin, but you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that type of story and, and just uh, the escapism in a movie like that. So love Indiana Jones. And again, tough because Last Crusade is probably the most fun of all three of those movies. So this is not an easy decision, but I have to say Jurassic Park. Wow. Sean, pressure's on you. You're the tiebreaker guy. Oh, that's so hard. Like, I, God, I agree with everything. Like, <laughs> I, I, I like, said Jurassic Park was the first, you know, cinematically. I didn't see the only, only saw Crystal Skull was the only India Jones movie I saw in the movie theaters. Um, Jurassic Park was like, is like the qu quintessential cinematic experience for me because I remember seeing it. It was the first thing I remember seeing. And then I also got to see it. I used to work in a big IMAX screen in London. It was the, it's the biggest screen in Europe. I used to work there and we used to have all these movie premieres. And it was one of the most fun jobs I ever had because we just used to fuck around and watch movies and get to meet really famous people. And, and get paid. And get paid. It was great. Um, and we were unionized, so they can't do shit. No one ever did any fucking work, and they couldn't touch us. Perfect. It was all artists. It was all actors and writers. Shut up! You're ruining America right now by yeah. saying that. Yeah. Just shut up and say it was wonderful. Shut up. And, um, <laughs> it was, but I was there, and they had a re-release. They did a 20th anniversary re-release of Jurassic Park on the IMAX screen. Yeah. I was like, oh fuck, this movie's so good. Like it. it such a brilliant movie. Um, the, but, like I said, I mean, Last Crusade, yeah, it's incredible. It's, you know, incredible. I, I, I think, I think I have to go with Last Crusade, even though I am biased because it was like my favorite movie growing up. And I knew every line, like as we were going back and forth, I knew every line as a kid. I used to watch that movie and said lines before they came out. And my dad would sit next to me and he would be like, oh. But the testament to that is, my dad would still sit next to me and watch the movie, even though I got to the point where I knew every line in it. He <laughs> wouldn't do that with Jurassic Park. He would have got bought. He wouldn't just sit through Jurassic Park a hundred right, times. Right, right, right. He would sit through Last Crusade a hundred times. Yeah. And for the same reason, you could take everything that goes on Jurassic Park, the, the mythical elements, the Nazis, the fighting, the action, you could take all of that out and still just have tarantino-esque dialogue scenes with harrison and sean like just you could just have that and it still holds up jurassic park i would argue needs the dinosaurs yeah it does it totally. the dinosaurs, you have some entertaining scenes but it doesn't it's not the same it doesn't hold up and also i would argue that for kids or generations now younger not even younger, but like people who are like teenagers now, I think they would look at Jurassic Park and I think they would say, I don't know why that's better than Jurassic World with Chris Pratt. Mm. Like, I think that's better. I prefer this one. Like, uh, yeah, that other one. Whereas I can't think of anything that is the real equivalent of Last Crusade. 
that someone could watch and be like, this is better than that. Like, like you said, the mummy maybe, but still generationally that doesn't really split anywhere. But I just think that is, it's the perfect movie of that event. I think you could sit anyone in front of Last Crusade and they would just go along with it. Whereas Jurassic Park, I mean, it, for our generation, you know, for having known it and sat through the shitty sequels, and see Jurassic World and go, yeah, they did a pretty good job, but still it's not the same. But right. if your first experience was Jurassic World, I don't think you go back to Jurassic Park and go, oh no, that's better. I think you just go, huh, well, that's where that came from. Whereas right, right. They, you know, I just don't think that would happen. I feel like people will go back to that and be like, oh, that's a really fun movie. You know, I, I just think it, it wins for that for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Last Crusade. I mean, that was a tough one, but Last Crusade goes on. All right. Okay, so then we go up to... Uh, we don't even have to really talk about this. This is Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Garbage Fire versus Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> I mean, this is literally... I'm trying to think of... that. Oh, Anything Star Wars after Return of the Jedi, with the exception of Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is how bad this sequel is. Crystal Skull, to me, is like, I guess, what was, this, what was the second one called? The Clone Wars? Was the second one called The Clone Wars? Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones, thank you, yeah. That's what Crystal Skull is in, 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 in the Indiana Jones pantheon. It's like you thought Phantom Menace was bad, but wait, it gets worse. You know, it's kind of like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, to me, it's Raiders. I, I I don't know what else to say. Yeah, Crystal Skull is just absolute shit, and and Raiders was a, a genre defining movie. Yeah, I think y you covered it all right there. It, the <laughs> most depressing thing about this showdown, unfortunately, and I'm not even just being like ironic or just being trying to make a joke i honestly believe in the current climate of hollywood and how it works out yeah. if that down now maybe not now but like certainly 10 years ago or five years ago you sit down in a hollywood studio and you have the script production design whatever for crystal skull and then raiders they're making crystal skull oh without a doubt <laughs> they're not making raiders like no. that what Ancient is Aliens is king. I, do you not watch that show? That's a fantastic show. What is yeah. this <laughs> other one you've got where it's like, it's kind of, it's a bit dark and it's like, it, it's a bit adult. This is too adult for kids, but it's also just kind of like, I don't know. And what's all this God stuff? God? The Ark of the Covenant? What's this shit? Is this a Jewish thing? What the fuck is this? Where's Moses? Yeah. Like, no, 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 we're going to have the fucking people coming after us. Uh, uh, Nazis? Oh, fuck. Well, you can't do Nazis in a movie. At, you, what are you talking? No. <laughs> anymore. Whereas the other one would be like, aliens. I love it. Great. Right, all right. Aliens. aliens. Russians? Yeah. Fucking hate the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's so good. Can I just point out, like, one of my least favorite or most hated parts of that garbage fire movie <laughs> is the natives just living embedded in clay <laughs> waiting for indiana jones yeah. and How his bastard son to walk by for them to pop out of nowhere it's like what the f what's going on here yeah what, I, what, when I, did I, they practice the kung fu yeah what Here's what I was wondering. Are they like on a shift? Like, are they there from nine to five and then somebody else <laughs> comes in later? Or have wondering. they just been there for, for decades waiting for somebody? I, I have to assume that it's like they clock in and out because they that's, get tired of just being there. They would have been that sharp. Well, half of them are just asleep. In the, but they're like, it's not my time. I'm just going to stay. <laughs> Literally exactly what I thought. Like, how did it, do they draw straws? Or is it a shift thing? Are they unionized? What's happening? Yeah. Okay, so Raiders it is. All right. And then I, I, I really have a really like soft spot for this movie and it upsets me. It's Jaws versus The Color Purple. Yeah, this one, um, I think we got into it pretty good in the, the last podcast talking about The Color Purple. And, and obviously, like we said, it's a tough watch, but what a powerful movie it is and the performances. Um, 
So n not by any means to take anything away, because what a beautiful film, The Color Purple. It is a beautiful it's, film. It's a beautiful um, film. It absolutely is. Um, and then Lawrence Jaws. Fishburne. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, Who's, great as a side character. Lawrence Fishburne in the credits is listed as Larry Fishburne. Did you notice that? Yeah. He changed to, to, he was always Larry Fishburne until, I think, The Matrix. Okay. And then he changed to Lawrence. Yeah. But he was, he was always, he was, because he was in um, Apocalypse Now. Right. He I'm was the kid in the house. Yeah. Well, yeah. And in Apocalypse Now, he was 16 years old. He lied and said he was 18 and, like, dished high school and went to the Philippines to shoot Apocalypse Now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's balls. Yeah. It's like, didn't they check his passport? I always wonder how these things happened. It's like, nobody check his passport? Because I'm sure the date on there is correct. But they just... old, Like, pre-9-11? Yeah. yeah. Anything. Like, sure. we, the, the, the original, what became American Idol in England, the first TV show that everything spun off from was called Pop Stars. And it was some cow... Uh, actually, no, Sam Cow wasn't on it. He produced it, but okay. it wasn't Sam Cow. There was other people in it. But they put together a band, a girl. Actually, no, sorry, it wasn't the first series. It was the second or third series, but it was this original show. They put together a girl band, and one of the members of the girl band was too young. Um, she or... said she to be in it legally because it was a contract and she was going to get paid and it was going to be my, Oh, shut the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> for... <laughs> Go on. <Yeah. laughs> Go on, John. <laughs> You're too young for pop music. Yeah. Um. But yeah, she was. She was. She had to be for, for the TV show purposes. The contract. She had to be eighteen. She was. Right. Um, she wasn't. She was sixteen during the audition. Okay. She turned seventeen, uh, and the only reason they caught it. The only reason they caught it is because she had a birthday during the filming and she slipped up and someone asked her and she was like, Oh, how old are you? And she went 17. And no, she said, uh, yeah, yeah. She was like 17. And then she, and she went, I mean, 19, <laughs> like literally. Whoops. Whoops. She caught it. And she was in the final that she was going to be in the, the band. And, oh. actually, and it, a couple of seasons later, she actually ended up, winning and being in the band like when she was on but like and that was prime time like big tv show it was like a big like how much money contract like yeah. no one fucking checked shit they're just like okay <laughs> no one cared you know and that was in like the late 90s so okay so jaws yeah jaws is still just iconic spielberg um and just it's a movie you can always go back to and you know people for have watched it for a couple of generations now and show their kids and sh you know it's one of those movies and it will always you know, what I, you know what i love that will never get old about jaws the whole like town like no no no, you can't shut it down so this girl got eaten you know we can't we can't cancel the the the, the tourist season because we we're making money i mean it's just it's so right now. exactly i mean it's just so relevant always you were just yeah. going on about that daily always business. relevant like nothing's happening i read there was an article about that that said everyone because it's sort of through the ranks the contagion the soderbergh movie everyone's watching yeah. that right now which i mean it's a great movie it's terrifying it's even more terrifying now but it was terrifying yeah. when it came out so right. realistic and whatever else but they it was this article and it said that everyone thinks contagion or like um, outbreak are the movies of now the perfectly can Jaws, they were like, no, Jaws is the movie of now. Like, yeah. yeah. Perfectly encapsulates everything that's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah, like people are dying in the sea. Yeah. And yeah. all you need to do is not go to the fucking beach and we <laughs> shut down the beach until we get the fucking shark. Yeah. But <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> it's so timely. I mean, I was watching it and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's perfectly timely. 